It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, December 13th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is very intrigued by the impact Artem Anisimov is having in Lehigh Valley. Yeah, I'm, I'm not shocked. We will get into that on Phantoms Tuesday, all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with the lovely and talented Russ Cohen, who is on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date with our episodes and Flyers news. You can email the show at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. We've got a mailbag tomorrow. So get us those questions today and we will answer them on the show. Today, we are going to preview Flyers vs. Avalanche, the sequel, and then get into the phantoms for the week locked on flyers is free and available on apple Podcasts, spotify odyssey wherever you are listening so subscribe you'll get all of our episodes here on the locked on podcast network we're over on youtube too so uh, head over there and subscribe as well Uh, a little bit of nhl news to talk about and how the flyers are related Ely Tolvanen, uh, who was put on waivers by the Nashville Predators, was claimed by the Seattle Kraken. And I'm not sure the Flyers would have interest in him particularly, but he's certainly an intriguing guy to be available on waivers. And the Flyers were certainly, you know, much higher on the list than the Kraken in terms of mm-hmm. the waiver order. And you know, between that and what we've been talking about with Artem and Isimov making that phantom steal, you know, is this 50 contracts thing really getting in the way of the ability of the Flyers to make adjustments? Yeah, 100 percent. It's part of, you know, it's it's there's two things you shouldn't be if you're not a great team. One is capped out and the other is be at 50 contracts like that's mm-hmm. the, that's the two things. And they are. So it's definitely hurting him. Now, again, I don't know if they would have gotten Tolvin in either. Um, he is a pure shooter. He is. Like, he has a, a tremendous shot. Like, that's something where um, would be the plus side. The negative side is he doesn't have a great away from the puck game, and that would bother Torts. So he probably not is not a fit here um, in Philly. So I get it. But his whole story is kind of an interesting one because at the draft – He was going to be a much higher player. He was going to go to college. His grades weren't good enough. Then all of a sudden, once that got out right before the draft broke, then some teams started dropping on him a little bit. And then it turns out, okay, maybe he's just more offensively minded and hasn't really broken out of that. Although I think Nashville is exceptionally picky um, when it comes to that. There's no question about it because they look at their scoring. They need scoring in the worst way again. Last year seemed to be the aberration for them. But end of the day, uh, I do think – He's worthy of you know taking a um, a risk on and and bringing him into a team and seeing what you can get out of him because there is some talent there. You know the difference between him and someone like let's say Cole Caulfield who's got a great shot too is you know Caulfield's an exceptional skater too and Tolvin is not an exceptional skater. So you know there's things to, to for him to still work on. So why not? Yeah, I think it's you know a low to medium risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, to pick a guy like him up and you know i I do think that uh, like we talked about yesterday the fact that anisimov signed an ahl deal he's free to go basically anytime anybody offers him an nhl contract and you know the flyers just don't have that flexibility and they don't have that flexibility to include in trades like they can't pick up they can't trade like a high end player for two players back right. because they don't have the number of contracts. And I'm sure they just want picks. I mean, I'm not saying that's the right strategy. I'm just saying the flex- flexibility isn't there. And so, uh, and I'm not sure, you know, what are we getting for all these 50 contracts? It's like taking a chance on a lot more guys. I think that 
you know, maybe they they could have let a couple more of them go in the off season or not picked up so many guys off waivers early on. Well, that's the thing. Lock up those contracts, which is the bigger you, problem. You know, like a guy like Sedlak, who is leveling off now. Like that's one of your fifty contracts. Wade Allison, who we don't even hear about anymore, um, is one of your fifty contracts. Like, unfortunately, if you remember before the season started, I said Wade Allison really has to show me to, to play a certain amount of games or I can't sign him again. And I'm back in that mode again because already we're, you know, we're getting to the point where it's December and he's barely played. And it's a shame. He's a great kid, but at the end of the day, you got to be there to play. And so these kinds of things do suck up the, the space on the 50 contracts list. And, and it does hurt you because when you're a team that's trying to find somebody, find a value out there, you almost can't. Yeah, well, we'll see how this continues to affect the Flyers and if they make any moves or not uh, to try and, you know, reorganize for a rebuild or, you know, try and make some moves to improve th- particular aspects of the Flyers' play. You know, that's what they would do. Or the you trade mean, line. They're not going to use the word rebuild with Swords here. He's only got four years. You're using one of those years this year. It would take the other three if you did a full rebuild. He's not doing that. No. Well, uh, in the short term, we are facing the Colorado Avalanche again. Uh, it's only been like a week since we saw them last. So, you know, not much to update on except for the fact that, um, you know, they're still banged up. Uh, since we saw them, we... Uh, have a couple of losses, uh, one in a shootout to the Rangers. They got thwacked by the Bruins, not shocking there. No. And then they won in overtime against the Blues, and Mika Rantanen got a hat trick. Yeah, I mean, look, they still have star players that can come through, and then they have depth players that could help them. It won't be an easy game. They're undermanned by a lot, and it still won't be an easy game. And so, you know, you have to look at, at who they have, and Rantanen still really hard for the Flyers to cover. He's always a problem. He's always getting great opportunities, great looks. You know, Devin Taves is another guy who creates a lot of offense for them. You know, these are some of the guys that you have to look at, and you have to try and – I mean, you, you should game plan for Rantanen now because you don't have McKinnon. And so right. you know, without McKinnon, you almost can game plan against him. So that's the thing. Um, you know, we'll see what Nishushkin's Alex Newhook's back. Yeah, Nishushkin being back is a big deal because he's a big guy that's very effective around the net, and there's a lot of crashing around Carter Hart every game. Like that's just that's a fact of life. And he's got great hands. So plus he plays a two way game too. He really does. So so there is that. Alex Newhook clearly uh, had a good game last time. You do have to watch them. So, you know, this is a team yeah. while they're undermanned, they skate very well. Yeah, uh, they did move Alex Newhook back down to 4C oh, again okay. um, in their most recent game, uh, mostly because Nishushkin and Lekkonen, um are back and just to adjust the lines yeah. that they, they want. Um, well, and Lekkonen not, being back is a big, is a physical mm-hmm. presence too. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that is basically like their second line, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so with my second line ad- assessment system. Yeah. Which is pretty good. It's been really good, I, actually. I, I really like it. Um, you know, I think that, yeah, they're going to just really have to button down again, like they've been doing, you know, with mixed results. And especially, you know, as we talked about yesterday with those two overtime losses, figuring out a way to overcome the disappointment from that and not let it break the system that has been working for the most part defensively and just like cleaning up the mistakes. Well, it works some days. It doesn't work others. It's working without Tony D'Angelo better than with Tony D'Angelo. Like that's just a fact lately. Uh, Cam York, I imagine is going to stay in there because he's playing well and and the coach likes the way he's playing. So really is there a place for Tony D'Angelo on Tuesday? I don't know. I mean, that's the, you know, that's a question you have to ask. Cam Atkinson is traveling with the team. Is he going to play? I don't feel like he's going to play. I just feel like he's traveling with the team. I don't know if you feel like he's 
any closer or have gotten any kind of wind that maybe he's going to play. So, you know, these are weird things going on with this team all the time. Yeah, I think, you know, it'll be another last minute decision that suddenly, uh, you know, even with JVR, when he came back in, it was kind of like, oh, he might be in tomorrow. Oh, I guess he's in. You know, it wasn't like we got a ton of notice with that other than him skating that one day in practice. I mean, we're assuming that Carter Hart will be in net again just because there's days off in between. But, you know, they missed an opportunity to play Sandstrom there. Like, that's just the way I see it. So I'm going to assume Carter Hart's going to be in. Yeah, I don't think there's any other way to look at it, especially because I know that Torts really likes to give a guy a chance to redeem himself. Yeah. And so like after a game like that for Carter Hart, which wasn't his best, again, wasn't horrible, but wasn't his best, maybe Mm -hmm. giving Carter Hart a chance to kind of get back on the horse right away and against a good team. Yeah, no question. So this is one where you're still going to have to watch out for some big bodies. You're still going to have to watch out for speed because Nishushkin is that size and speed guy, the same as Ranton. And these are, you know, things that we'll see what they can do. Uh, which dif- which defense is going to show up? Is it going to be the defense with the Golden Knights against the Golden Knights? Or is it going to be the defense against the Coyotes? Like, that's the question you always have to ask now. Yep. That is the truth. All right. We have some phantoms to talk about. They had a pretty good weekend, and we will do that coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer, esports, and of course the NHL, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like ours, you can find those on BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today available wherever you get your podcasts. Russ, it was a pretty good weekend for the Phantoms, I would say. Uh, I think one of the main things I learned is Charlotte isn't as good as they are purported to be uh, Mm -hmm. this year related to past years. Cause if you look at, you know, the previous week where they split with Charlotte and then this weekend where they won both games against Charlotte at home, it was a, it was pretty impressive. And part of that is because of Artem Anisimov. I feel like we're talking about him a lot this episode, but He's making a huge impact with the Phantoms. He signed Friday. So Saturday was his first game in permanently with the team and uh, just got to work two goals, two assists right away. Yeah. Anisimov, like I covered him when he was a really young player with the Rangers and I could tell um, I used to have a friend that would talk to him in Russian and he like the way I was covering him. So I would get some, you know, some information from him. And he, he was a very prideful guy. Like he's a guy that really gives it his all, all the time, wants to play, wants to be there on the ice, wants to suck up those minutes and get those points. And so, you know, he was always capable of doing that. He did get better when he left the Rangers because he had more opportunity. Well, right now in the AHL, he's loaded with opportunity. So he's going to get a lot of points. Yeah, it seems like he's right at it. And uh, I think, you know, in addition to him having that good game himself, he makes the guys around him better, right? So they yeah. put him on a line with Ali Lixel and Tyson Forster. And if you look back, including the other games this season where – Uh, Anisimov was in before he signed the the contract and he was still on the PTO. Uh, Ali Lixil is averaging two points per game when Anisimov is also in the lineup. Uh, That's Mm -hmm. five games, three goals, seven assists. And that was uh, a stat Bob Rochuk put out on Twitter. And I think that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it is pretty remarkable. I, I have to agree with that. Good for Bob for getting that. Yeah, and overall, Anisimov has uh, five goals and three assists in seven games. Again, mm-hmm. more than a point per game. And, and it 
it is clear that he's above the AHL level just from a hockey oh, yeah. perspective. He just yes. knows the game so much better than a lot of the guys out there. And I think he works it to his advantage and he's having a, a lot of fun out there. Yeah. I mean, again, this is a potential lost asset for the Flyers. So why do I say that? Because if he were signed to an NHL deal and he were up at, with the big club and doing something, you could get a draft pick for him if you didn't want to continue on with him after this year. But as an AHL player, like we said, you can just go get him uh, if you're another team. So there's nothing really, no reason to trade for him. So, you know, he could be a, a deadline guy, but there's no room for him. Getting back to the overall picture for the Phantoms, while they did win both games against Charlotte, they did lose to Hartford on Wednesday, 3-2. to two, And that one was a bit of a, a disappointment just because Hartford is not good this season mm -hmm. at all. And they went down three goals. They were down 3 nothing in the end of the first period in this game. So they it was good that they fought back and got those two goals. But it's like one of those winnable games that you're like, eh, maybe they should have had that one. Yeah, I, I think that's that's fair. And but, you know, like you said, they at least made a little bit of a comeback in that one. Um, York had some some good mm -hmm. plays in that game was a factor and he's been a factor up with the NHL club. So, yeah. All right. I'm not going to you know kill him for that. But what I'm going to kill the Flyers for is, you know, Ali Luxell always gets mentioned on this show for good reason. Like playing on the top line, he's scoring. He's a pointy game guy. Lucas Sedlak hasn't done anything at the NHL level in four games. His minutes are dropping. Uh, why not put Patrick Brown at 4C and bring up Lixell and not put him on the fourth line? Like, find an actual spot for him and leave him there for a couple weeks. Zach McEwen's out right now, right? So this is an opportunity. I don't know. They're not going to take it, I'm sure. Well, stranger things have happened uh, as of recording. We don't know, but uh, maybe the hockey True. gods will do us a favor. And I will say this. The hockey gods have been pretty this, good to us. Happens. Yeah, the hockey gods have been pretty good to this show where we've talked about stuff and it's happened. So you might be right about that. I'm, I'm going to think positive here, Russ. <laughs> we have to with this team. There's still a All lot right. of season left. Yeah, there is. And, you know, with the Phantoms, not only did they beat Charlotte twice, but the second game, they won six to one. It was a yeah. scoring palooza. Absolutely super fun game. And their uh, power play continues to get better and better, which is phenomenal. They were one for four on Wednesday, one for four on Friday, three for seven on Saturday. And right now they're sitting in fifth in the AHL overall in power play percentage, which is not a place I thought they would be at the beginning of the season, I have to say. No, but they've added a lot since then. I mean, you know, whether yeah. you think Bellows can play in the NHL or not, he's going to be a plus player in the AHL. And Isimov is way better than an AHL player. So they've they've added a lot of talent here. You know, Cooper Marodi, when he's played, has been pretty good too. So they, they've added some guys. And by adding those guys, uh, you've definitely helped out the power play for sure. Yeah, now they just have to get the penalty kill into shape, which is still a problem. Uh, I think they're 30th in the league. I mean, it's getting incrementally better, but it's not enough that they're yeah. keeping themselves out of trouble. And, you know, in the AHL, penalties happen all the time because of the fisticuffs and and all of that. So I think that it's just something they, they need to work on a, a little bit more. Um, I also want to talk about Sam Erson because he was in all three games again. Had a rough go of it on Wednesday with that first period, giving up three goals. Um, he didn't play horribly in that game and he kept them in it late. But uh, again, I think, you know, they might be overdoing it with him. Yeah, I think they are. But again, I, I think. So what's the end game here? I think the end game is they want to see if there's any number one potential, at least even at the AHL level. So they're really just throwing it at him. I think for the most part, he's passing that test because um, with Felix Sandstrom up with the big club, you know, that's a fair thing. Because let's face it, at some point, you're not going to be able to hold on to Felix Sandstrom and Urson and Hart. So at some point, one of them is going to go. And if let's say Hart decides he's going to stay with the team, you're going to extend him and make him your franchise guy. So then these two guys are fighting for the backup spot. 
one of them's not going to want to be in the AHL forever because I do think they're both talented. So I think they're, you know, in the process of figuring that out now. Right. And this is why I'm also frustrated that Santrum isn't getting the games because we need info to be able to compare and figure out what the best option is. And right now I have a lot more info on what Sam Erson is capable of than I do Felix Sandstrom. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, to me, the biggest thing that I get out of this with Sam Erson is that he's healthy. And when he's healthy, he's very good. And so now I think the Flyers are sort of testing, the, the organization's testing his durability a bit. That could very well be. All right. We have a ton more prospects to talk about, and we will get to that coming up next. Russ, we have already mentioned Kiefer Bellows on the show. Uh, He is doing real well in Lehigh Valley. He has a four-game point streak since joining the team. He's got two goals and two assists. On Wednesday, he had five shots on goal, leading the team with one assist, and he scored in both of the games against Charlotte. So he seems pretty motivated. He is. There's no question he would like to get another call up. Uh, I think if he continues to play well, that could definitely happen for him. Uh, So, yeah, why not? I mean, this is his career is on the line. Like, you know, otherwise you might just be a journeyman. So I think he's playing it that way. And I, I, I appreciate what he's doing because I, I, you know, I've covered him a bit and, and I think that he's really a, a great competitor and you hope you get the results. So now the, the thing is just as an example, because he has RFA status, um, I'm signing him next year. I am not, you know, again, this is a big power forward. I am not going to just say, Hey, make the flyers. It's a failed pickup. No way. I'm re-signing him because you just never know when a guy like this is going to put it all together. I think knowing Chuck Fletcher and the way he negotiated these RFA contracts this year, it's one of those two-year deals where the first year is a two-way and the second year yeah. is a one-way deal for like the you know 850k or 925k or whatever right they come to. But I, I think that's the structure of the kind of deal that Bellows would go for. Yeah. And I think that's that's what you do with him. It makes sense. Um, it keeps organizational depth up. Certainly, if he comes up, he doesn't hurt you. And you hope that at some point he does really put it together because he just didn't get enough playing time with the Islanders. And I think, you know, even if he gets the full season here in Lehigh, uh, it's only going to help him. Yeah. And I think another guy who is on the cusp right now is Tyson Forrester. You know, we've been talking about him as a guy that could stay in the AHL as long as necessary this year just to get it all together but he's starting to really make a case for himself he's got a four game point streak going with three goals Mm -hmm. three assists he had uh, two goals two assists against charlotte points in nine of the last 11 games and leads the team with 18 points but i think the part of it that i do want to talk about in addition to the production there is that his play away from the puck and you know understanding his role defensively is getting better and better and better like he's really you know establishing himself as part of the breakout in a better way and i just appreciate his play away from the puck yeah i mean he is still only 20 right so I'm okay with leaving him there, letting him, you know, be the best guy in the team, which we hoped he would be. And and now he's on path to do that. Let him be an all-star. And and maybe, you know, at the end of the all-star break there or at some time later in the season when the Flyers admit that they're out of it, um, you bring him up and you give him that reward and then you see where he's at next year. Because, again, there is no reason to rush him. There isn't. You have other guys – Cates is a couple, two, three years older. You got other guys that are older. Even Lixell is older, and that's why I want to see what I've gotten him. He's not. He's got ages on his side. So yep. keep him on this path. It's fine. Yeah, you mentioned Jackson Cates. I think his development is getting affected by the Anisimov signing. Yeah. You know, he got bumped down in the lineup a little bit. So definitely want to keep on an eye on that just because I don't think his play is diminished. I just no. think. It, it's the nature of things. He's but a battler, wanna, though. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to make sure he gets his opportunities there because I care, damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, on the defensive side, Igor Zamula, you know, got sent down for this road trip. Uh, so he just checked in Friday and Saturday. And I would say, you know, Friday was a, a real solid game for him. I loved him on the power play. He had a fantastic dish to Bellows, who one time did in for a power play goal. And uh, he got an assist in each of the two games. Listen, he we've talked about him. We see the jump that he's made. We've seen the phys- the physical nature now that he could play with because he's put on some muscle, and we see the speed and the way that he could bring the puck up the ice. At this point, he should, you know, definitely get a recall this season and stay there. You know, York Zamula should both be there. I don't care if Nick Sealer sat the last 15 games of the season. It doesn't matter. Uh, if Zamula looks like the real deal when you bring him up, there's no reason to bring Nick Sealer back. Like, there just isn't. You've got these guys who you're, are your future, more speed, everything else. Now, if you want to bring in Sealer and sign him to a two-way deal, fine. If he gets sent down this time, fine. Next year, I may not bet that he's going to play 60 games. This year, I'm probably going to win the bet. But next year, that's fine because then you just say to Connaughton, we don't really need you. You know, that's fine. Thanks exactly. for thanks for stopping by. That's okay. If they want to do that, that's fine. But Nick Sealer should not stop Zamula from – from getting better here and uh, getting his NHL shot. That would be wrong. Yeah. Nor should he stop Ronnie Adder from getting better. And right. And that's another his thing. Shot. Yeah. yeah. So he did not get any official points this weekend, but he made some really heads up plays. I think uh, out there this weekend, especially on Saturday, uh, he worked really hard to keep the puck in play and dish it to Tyson Forster, who then played to Lixel, who dished it to Anisimov for a goal. So it was like he was one step removed, but it was his heads up play and his battle that kept the puck in the zone in the first place to lead to that goal. And so this is the kind of work that he does that sometimes goes unnoticed because it doesn't you know, show up on the score sheet. But he got Rachel points, and that's important. He did. Well, my points are important. Right. So, but the thing with this is because of Adderd, if Adderd really pushes this and and he can play next year, then I feel like Zamula is going to get traded, and that, that would be terrible. But there's, you know, there would be no reason to put him in Lehigh next year, Zamula. Like, it's just. No. But to trade him would be, I would not want to do it. I, I, I you know, I've made it public that before the no move if john tortorella is having trouble with travis sanheim telling the media what he is or how good he is or isn't then trade him get something for him because you can get real value and then that saves both of these young guys because again we're pretty sure that torts can deal with samula because he said good things about him he doesn't say enough good things about sanheim he's really at odds at what his defense is and, and what his offense even is so that's the reason I bring up Sandheim's name, not because I want to trade him. I like him, but I have to go with what the coach is putting out there, the vibe. Well, I certainly hope there's room for both Zamula and Adderd, especially next season where maybe we can use that bronze spot as well to account mm-hmm. for some young D who are ready to make that jump a little bit more permanently. Uh, this upcoming weekend is pretty exciting because we have the teddy bear toss game on Saturday versus Providence. Uh, that is part of a home and home Friday. They're at Providence Saturday. They're home against Providence. Um, I always love those teddy bears. Is there an etiquette games. with the teddy bear toss? Cause I was at a game. No, where you I just was... do it. No, but I was covering his media. And so a kid came up to me and said, Hey, do you want to, you know, purchase the teddy bear to toss it, whatever. And I said, no, I'll do it. And you could toss it. He goes, no, you have to do it. And I'm like, I can't, I'm in the press box. Like I can't do it. I no, would have given him the money. I, yeah, it was just weird. It was in Michigan. All right. Well, hopefully it's a good one. And we get uh, a really high volume of teddy bears for the charity on Saturday. And then Sunday they are playing Hershey. Uh, wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing, uh, congrats to the Phantoms on 2,000 games in the history of the yeah, franchise. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, That happened this past weekend, and it's obviously between all their different locations, starting in Philadelphia and moving around and, until they pretty much settled in. We forget about Adirondack. Way. We just don't even talk uh, about it. No, no. 
All right. That'll do it for today's show. We are going to be back again tomorrow where we will recap the game against the Avalanche and get to your mailbag questions. So send them in uh, via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or you can comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen today. For your next listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and their take of the day. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.